James Bond, Agent 007. When you think of James Bond in the realm of gaming, it's usually something like this. that you probably wouldn't associate the British super spy with. Ready for this? Ready? Ready? Yeah. Alright, go and show them. I know, crazy, right? A 007 game that plays like The Legend of Zelda? That's some heavy warlock magic. But believe it or not, in 1998, a year after the stellar GoldenEye came out for the N64, this actually happened. This is James Bond 007 for the Game Boy. Now, the story of a 007 game can fall into two categories. Very good, or very by the book, almost forgettable. And sadly, that's where this game falls into. As Bond, your mission is to stop the evil General Golgob and his henchmen, including villain staples Oddjob and Jaws, from launching nuclear missiles to destroy the world and rule under a new order. Definitely not the most original plot, but being a Game Boy title, I can't really fault the developers too much for this. Then again, there was Link's Awakening. As I mentioned earlier, 007 is an action RPG in the vein of the Zelda series, rather than being an action platformer or shooter, which is the genres Bond is most comfortable in. You'll travel to a few different locales all over the world, solving small puzzles, collecting key items to advance, and using that license to kill on various goons. At your disposal, you'll have a few guns like a pistol, machine gun, rocket launcher, grenades, and machete, Gadgets such as the trusty laser watch, exploding pen, grappling hook, body armor, and more. And we can't forget that patented judo chop. Controlling Bond is incredibly simple and smooth considering that the controls are exactly like Link's Awakening. You move Bond with the D-pad, select is your inventory, start is the save menu, and A and B are your inventory buttons where you assign whatever weapon or gadget you need. Now, there's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, kind of like a half pro and a half con about this game. First, the pro. Along the way, you'll come to a casino, something that anything Bond related is ever without, where you find that in order to meet the person you need to talk to for story progression, you need to go to the Baccarat room. To get in there, you need to win $2,500 in the casino by playing either Blackjack or Red Dog. Now, many games like this are fun, but here's the con half and one of my biggest pet peeves in games. Winning gambling games in order to advance through the story. This has been done before, with Red Dead Redemption and Gun being a few examples I can think of, where you have to win a certain amount of money in a game of random chance and luck in order to get to the next section, and it sucks. Because 9 times out of 10, the AI is a cheap bastard especially in James Bond 007. It took me 30 minutes to about an hour losing all of my money and walking back to the register to get more, just to lose it all again before finally winning enough to get into the back room. Now, I may be in the minority about something like this, but I can't help it. It's BS padding in a video game. Since the gripe iron is still hot, there are a few small ones as well, but not as bad. There's a few sections in the game where you have to navigate through a maze-like corridor to get to the next destination, and getting lost can happen very quickly if you don't take notes or use a guide. Also, concerning the ending of the game, well, when you beat it, your reward is three passcodes that allow you to play the card games whenever you want. Neat, I guess. Well, there is one other thing. There are two endings to James Bond 007. 
well, technically still just the one, but depending on what you do during the game, you'll get an additional scene at the end, making it the better ending. Either way, here's how you get that good ending. When you arrive at HQ in London and talk to Q to receive your equipment, you'll see a guy in a recliner behind him. Talk to him twice and he'll fly through the wall. Go through the hole and walk to the other side of the room to pick up the marble, then play the game to the end like normal. That's it. Or you could just go YouTube the ending. You're doing that now, aren't you? <sighs> On the presentation side of things, the graphics are pretty good for Game Boy. Yeah, not color. This is one of the last OG Game Boy games ever made. But it is Super Game Boy compatible if you want that TV experience. The sprites are drawn nicely with not a lot of duplicates used. Plus the boss sprites are kind of comical. Especially Oddjob, he looks like a friggin' Muppet. As far as stages go, they're varied enough so you don't get that feeling that you're walking through an endless hallway. It, well, except for the mazes. On to audio, the music is a few variants of the 007 theme, and while not spectacular, it does get the job done. And sound effects? Well, the blips and bloops are blippy and bloopy. Not much to really say on that. So that's James Bond, 007, or as I like to call it, The Legend of Zelda, Bond's Awakening. And you know what? It's a pretty good 007 RPG. Now it's a pretty good Zelda clone, too. Despite the few flaws, like the maze sections and that damn gambling part, it's still pretty fun to play. However, with the weak replay value, unless you really want to play Blackjack, Baccarat, and Red Dog, it might turn you away from it. However, it's pretty cheap to pick up, so give it a go, you might like it. Just try to bring it back in one piece, won't you? And with that, this is the Dolly Popka saying, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next Outside the Box. However, it's pretty affordable to pick up, so give it a go, you might like it. Just try to bring it back in one piece, wouldn't you? And with that, this is the Dolly Popka, and I messed up a lot of that crap. Okay. Won't you? Why do I...